not releasing his medicals to a lot of teams, not participating in media interviews, Marvin Harrison Jr., and positive medical reports coming out of Michael Penix Jr.'s situation at the Combine. Justin Fields Baker, is Atlanta looking at, at both these options? Also, Atlanta Falcons rumor they like Kirk Cousins more than more than Justin Fields. We're breaking down all that and more. Caleb Harrison Jr., Michael Penix Jr., Justin Fields, Baker, Kirk Cousins, and more. The Fantasy Football Show begins now. Live from the FantasyFootballShow.com studios. It's the Fantasy Football Show. Live! Live! Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Smitty is also live whenever news breaks. From the FantasyFootballShow.com news desk, here is your breaking news. Lots of news to break down, lots of players to talk about, combine-related, uh, Justin Fields-related. We're going to have a lot of Justin Fields news until the the league the league uh the, the actual league year begins so, so we got some some days and weeks to kind of hear a lot about justin fields on and off kirk cousins baker mayfield mike evans we got a lot of news mike evans too but let's start off with the combine because this is still speculative rumor based stuff we have nothing concrete here whereas we do have three pieces of concrete information to go over right now relating to the rookies and combine caleb williams is refusing to release his medicals to all the 32 teams, and he he's being selective as to what teams he wants to release his medicals to. Now, that's not really as bad as it sounds. Reason being is that Caleb Williams has has total control of this situation, and the bottom the bottom line is this: he doesn't uh, he doesn't need to worry about the teams that that aren't going to draft him. And while it seems very weird and while we want to speculate and complain about how this adds to the character problems we think he has it really doesn't it's more of a, a business decision and and quite honestly the bears don't care if he says hey bears i'm releasing my medicals to you but i'm not going to release it to the teams that draft you know 18 and beyond or whatever i'll be selective with it uh the bears aren't going to care the Bears, this is not devaluing his value at all to the teams contemplating taking him because he's releasing the medicals to them. He's really looking at, okay, he's got kind of some some question marks around him, uh, surrounding him, his character, different things. And I don't, I don't think he wants to give anybody any ammunition. Now, what ammunition could it be? We don't know. I don't think it's anything bad. I think it's just him being very, very selective as to who can even talk about him so that he doesn't have any negative things dragged down as his, his potential uh, value and being the number one overall pick. The Bears are going to get everything they want, and that's all that really matters, and the Bears are going to draft him. So at the end of the day, it's a non-issue. Marvin Harrison Jr., a little bit weird uh, approach to the Combine. He decided not to show up for his media portion and, and talk to the media. I don't know, uh, but the reports are that, that all the teams loved him. He did great interviewing with the teams, and showing up for the media doesn't really determine much. Um, these two are kind of non-stories, even though people want to build on top of them and act like it maybe devalues Caleb a little more. It really doesn't. And I'm pretty critical of Caleb from, from a certain level and from a certain angle. I also am very critical about Caleb going to Chicago. I like Caleb in Washington with Kingsbury. Kingsbury was his QB coach at USC this very past season. So the rapport there is good. If, if, if Caleb did find his way into a Washington commander uniform, I'd be more on board because I think Kingsbury can mold and sculpt him. I don't believe in Shane Waldron in Chicago. I don't believe in Chicago. I don't believe in, in that entire coaching staff. And I don't necessarily believe that Ryan Poles is as magnificent as everybody, everybody wants to paint him uh, out to be. I think uh, this doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. These two pieces of news relating to him not talking to the media, him not releasing his medicals. No, 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 no. We're just above everything. We're just not going to participate at the combine. We're above the combine. This is a Mickey Mouse little event is basically what these two are saying. It offends me. It offends you. It offends dad. And it, it doesn't matter though, because the teams don't care. That, that's that's uh, the bottom line. So Caleb, non-news. Harrison Jr., non-factor. Penix Jr., we have good news, ladies and gentlemen. Get ready to give him a mashed potato celebration. Yeah. Mashed potatoes! What, what do we have, Smitty? Smitty, what news? 
What possible news do we have that's good about Michael Penix Jr.? I'm, I'm on the edge of my seat. This guy, everybody said, oh, he's an injury-prone guy. He's an injury. He's a walking injury. Be, be worried about him. Be scared about him. Great medical uh, uh, news emerged. Uh, where was the Adam Schefter report? It's, it's somewhere around here. I think this is the report Adam Schefter was talking about earlier. From the Combine coverage, Washington Cube... Uh, Washington QB Michael Penix Jr. got positive medical news here in Indy, while UNC QB Drake May has impressed in his interviews. Just a lot of updates coming out. We don't have a whole lot of details on some of this stuff. We only have these little bits and pieces getting spread out. What is the great medical news that's incoming? I'll let you know as soon as I know more information, but this is good. This is very good. Why? Because this man suffered season-ending injuries multiple times. And his biggest knock, his biggest concern is injury. It's not talent. It's not ability to thrive at the NFL level. It's not the ability to extrapolate and translate what he does in college for the pro game. He's a very, very potent, gunslinging, just absolutely glorious quarterback that if he does get in the right spot, <coughs> Seattle, he might actually go straight to the mother freaking moon. Maybe the even... Moon to further distances than the moon if we're very lucky and he goes somewhere where he's got JSN and DK Metcalf catching footballs. Now, you might be saying, I'm a Philip. I'm a, I'm a late to the party Peter. And, and Peter doesn't know what you mean by Seattle. Why are we talking to Seattle, Smitty? What's going on there? Let me tell you there, Peter. Late to the party Peter. We're talking about Seattle Seahawks at number 16. Michael Penix Jr. is very much rumored to, oh, he'll fall out of round one. He's not that good. He got figured out by Michigan, Smitty. He finally got figured out even though he dominated all year long and went to a national championship game and you're complaining. He got figured out. He made it to a national championship game. Can you believe it? The guy is totally a fraud. He'll never be anything at the NFL level, Smitty. He went to a national championship game. He made it that far. He played amazingly all the way up to the national championship game he made Roma Dunze into a star uh he uh, Roma Dunze made him into a star it's a two-way street they both did that to each other one didn't make the other they're both absolutely magnificent together and Penix Jr. is a big time prospect prospect uh, a Heisman type candidate he's constantly making waves people love this guy amazing touch good footballs overthrew a Dunze in the in the, the the national championship game Smitty did you see that horrible throw a Dunze comes out and says no 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 I beg to differ with you media he threw that ball exactly where it was supposed to go I ran the wrong route Michael Penix Jr. getting blamed for a lot of what happened in that national championship game but people failed to talk about how the Michigan defense is one of the best defenses anybody could come across in the in the game of football in college football and so they're going to make anybody look mediocre. Exposed Penix Jr.? I don't think so. Ryan Grubb, OC at Washington, did a great job with him. So great that the Seattle Seahawks said, let's bring Ryan Grubb, his OC in Washington, Michael Penix Jr. Let's bring Ryan Grubb from Washington all the way over to Seattle. And now Ryan Grubb gets hired as the no new OC in Seattle. Oh, wait, Penix Jr., I'm going to Seattle. See you later. Oh, you're going to the NFL draft. Maybe we'll connect in Seattle and you can throw footballs to JSN and DK Metcalf and we can do mashed potato dances until our hearts are content. Very, very, very much on board this situation. This is this situation excites me more than ever. But we still have the the doubting Donnies and the Panic Peters going Schmitty. But you know Michael Panic Jr. He's a very big injury risk. Which you know no one's saying he still doesn't enter with injury risk, even if he's totally healthy. He's done it for two years, but he's done it for two years. There's a reason he's an older player. He is an older player, not an older, older like 26 year old player. He's just a yearish. A little bit more than a year older than the average quarterback coming out of football. You know, like, that is that is not a big deal when you're a quarterback and you can play into your mid-30s at the very, you know, very, very earliest that you would be starting to drop off. So it's not a problem for quarterbacks. Running backs, it is. Running backs, you're, you're like a year and a half older than everybody else. It's a big deal because that, that 27, 28-year-old season comes quick. When you're a wide receiver, not the biggest deal, but... Wide receivers start to drop off about 30 years old. Cooper Cup, 30 years old, dr kind of dropping off. Sometimes you go to 31. Sometimes, if you're lucky, you get to 32 as a, as a wide receiver in the National Football League. But that's not 35, 38, 37, 39, 
quarterbacks can do a little little differently. This doesn't matter that he's a little bit older, but people will say he played so long at the college game, Smitty. I remember watching him in 1957 in, 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 in college football. This guy's played forever. He has played a long time, but he suffered season-ending injury, season-ending injury, season-ending injury. That's a lot. I get it. People were upset, but what does he do? Shakes it off. Rehabs, gets stronger, plays two consecutive elite seasons. Two of them. He put the injuries behind him. He played two elite seasons, comes out, declares for the NFL draft, and all the, the nitpicking Peters are going to sit there and say, oh, I'm going to go ahead and dig into his injury past over and over and over. He's done it two years in a row. What more do you want? He went and said, I could, I could enter the draft, but no one's going to believe I could stay healthy. Let's go prove it. Two years, boom. Two years, Heisman Trophy candidate type of guy. Let's go. Drop big numbers. Let's go. Create Roma Dunze. Let's go. Make Ryan Grubb an amazing OC. Oh, Ryan Grubb goes to Seattle. Guess where Michael Penix Jr. is very likely to linger in terms of ADP in the 2024 NFL draft right around this territory he could slip past Seattle and then free fall into the second round because no one here but Pittsburgh and maybe Miami if they're smart I don't think they are because Miami Mike McDaniel seems to have learned everything from Kyle Shanahan the good and the bad the good they both have amazing schemes they're both scheme masterful uh, savants they know offensive coordinating but what does Kyle Shanahan not know quarterback oh there's Smitty Brock Purdy he finally found him no no, he didn't. He didn't. That wasn't necessarily Shanahan. From what I gather, the majority of Brock Purdy being targeted and found was Adam Peters, who's now in freaking Washington. Adam Peters, the new GM in Washington, said during the combine, I got to go find myself another Brock Purdy. Taking ownership of Brock Purdy and the decision of locating, finding, and drafting him, this is the same man that drafted George Kittle for the Niners. This is the same man that constantly finds amazing talent. Ayuk, all these pieces that the Niners have in place from Kittle, Ayuk, to a lot of, not all of, but a lot of Brock Purdy and the decision to bring him in was Adam Peters. And he did not get taken care of in San Francisco. Why? They didn't elevate him to GM and move John Lynch to president of whatever. No, they decided to let Adam Peters walk. He walked to Washington. He went to the combine. He was talked to and he said, I'll have to find my new Brock Purdy. This guy has identified talent like no other. And now he's in Washington, which makes me think that Washington's absolutely going JD5. Why is JD5 the number two overall pick? Because he's my number one overall pick. And if I like him, Adam Peters likes him. If Adam Peters likes him, I like him. Because I think Adam and Peters, Adam Peters and I will push the bunk beds together and make more room for activities because I think Adam Peters and I just became best friends. Okay, so, so in a nutshell, Michael Penix Jr. could free fall absolutely in the NFL draft if he gets past number 16. Why? I went on off a big tangent on Shanahan. I'm sorry about that. Uh, the, the, the Miami Dolphins... Mike McDaniel from the Kyle Shanahan coaching tree comes over to Miami, thinks Tua Tagovailoa is the best quarterback since sliced bread. Oh my God, this looks a lot like Kyle Shanahan. Without Adam Peters, Kyle Shanahan would still be chasing Jimmy G and all these different pieces that he screwed up. But guess what? Guess what? Miami Mike McDaniel doesn't want a quarterback. Miami Mike McDaniel thinks Tua is worth a long-term extension. Miami Mike McDaniel is trying to re- negotiate or figure out a long-term plan of keeping Tua Tagovailoa one hit away from his career being over. No one wants it. Prayers up for him. I hope he stays healthy. But to not identify that you could trade for Justin Fields right now and win a championship is take a lap material, Mike McDaniel, even though I love you, even though I love your scheme, even though I love Devon Achan, even though I love the way you run your offense, you obviously have problems identifying where your weakness could be at quarterback. Where'd you learn it? Kyle Shanahan, both of you take a lap. Back to what I'm saying. Free-falling Michael Penix Jr., to Seattle, number 16, where his OC from Washington sitting 
fantastic. JSN, we got DK Metcalf. They'll probably release Tyler Lockett. Maybe they trade him, probably release him. And, and this is the duo. JSN gets vaulted. Oh, good God. JSN probably is maybe a moon man this year because JSN's now vaulting into the number two locked and loaded spot in Seattle to maybe catch footballs from at least Geno Smith, worst case scenario. Probably Michael Pettix Jr. Let's go. Oh, where, where's Michael Penix Jr.? Isn't he on some list? The moon man. There he is. Dropping loads and out. Looky space. here, reindeer. We got Michael Penix Jr., moon man extraordinaire. Space Moses. D dare I say he was, was the first moon man? I, I think he was the first or second bold prediction we made. Because the reason being is this was the, the national championship game. We were so early on. I didn't want to release any Moon Men, Mars Men, Saturn Men yet, but I think I came out strong and said JD5. I think JD5 was first. JD5. The Saturn Men. One small step for man. Saturn! One giant leap for Saturn. We put JD5 on here, and we put Michael Penix Jr. on the Moon, Moon Men. Men list. Dropping loads in outer space. <laughs> let, let me tell you, I kind of am tempted to put JSN on the Moon Men list now, so you all can take advantage for as long as you can before the inevitable happens and they get an upgrade at quarterback. That upgrade being Michael Penix Jr. Lo looking at the man right now. Two freaking the moon. Maybe even Saturn. Everybody involved. DK, Kenneth Walker, Zach Charbonnet, JSN might be going to Saturn, but at least going to the moon. This is fantastic news for everybody that loves those players and Seattle football. Seattle Seahawks country, let's ride. Okay. Uh, uh, Caleb Williams, where is he going? Probably Chicago. Mar Marvin Harrison Jr., is he going to the Arizona Cardinals? Or are one of these two teams, the Washington Commanders or New England Patriots, going to get a quarterback like Cousins or Fields? That way, being able to utilize the two or three pick to jump in front of uh, Arizona's hopes and dreams and grab Marvin Harrison Jr. But Washington and New England cannot draft Marvin Harrison Jr. if they don't solve their quarterback problem problem before they go into the NFL draft so we'll clearly know what's going on when the draft kicks off unless uh you know in the middle of round one <laughs> number two overall pick gets uh there's a trade that gets made or, or or cousins whatever anything happens and all of a sudden you know Washington selects Marvin Harrison Jr but there's a good chance as of right now I'd say 75 percent chance this is just my guesswork and estimation but I would say Caleb goes one JD Five goes number two, and Drake May goes number three. Quarterback, quarterback, quarterback. Arizona Cardinals select Marvin Harrison Jr. Maybe Brock Bowers or or Malik Neighbors or Roma Dunze go five. I think the other wide receiver that's left over, Neighbors or Dunze, probably going to be a Dunze, goes to the Giants at six, if that's the case. And I hate that. I don't want him there. Atlanta Falcons, if they don't use this number eight overall pick, will take, I think, a Dunze if he's there. Um, I don't know what happens if he's not. Maybe they even trade down. Who the hell knows? But that's kind of the feeling right now. I am really hoping a Dunze does somehow, some way, uh, leapfrog neighbors with his workouts and pro days and ex, you know etc. Because if char if the Chargers took him, he'd have a fantastic connection with Justin Herbert for years and years to come. I do believe neighbors and Adunze are very close. I think people that suggest that neighbors is by far in a way this better receiver, no doubt about it. I, I don't agree with that. I, I respect your take, but I don't agree with that. I think situation will determine who's better, Neighbors or Adunze. Adunze is bigger, he's stronger, he has a better route tree, and 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 while you might say all those things don't necessarily matter, and, and, and there could be some truth to that because route trees don't necessarily determine whether a player is going to be able to develop into that, sometimes you just say you don't try and fix what isn't broken. Neighbors is used a certain way. They don't need him to run all these routes. He's downfield, downfield, always open, doing the... Th Doing things right. Why try and fix what ain't broke? I get it. That's a good argument. But I believe you watch the footage, you watch the film, you take a gander at it. They're both fantastic. They're both neck and neck. They're both elite. They're both capable of being top 12 wide receivers in the National Football League. They're both capable of being top 10 fantasy football wide receivers. Anybody that says that this is a bad take, that neighbors and a Dunze, they're far apart, isn't looking at it carefully enough, in my opinion. If they don't think that situation can't flip a Dunze over neighbors fantasy wise or the or vice versa, I don't think they're examining the, the problem and situation carefully. 
These are three elite wide receivers. All three of Marvin Harrison Jr., Neighbors, and Adunze could all be top 12 fantasy football wide receivers. It's just that good of a draft class. Yeah, that's going to bump out some good guys, but it, they're capable of it. Are they locks? No. Are two of them locks to be top 12? A near lock. Is one of them, Marvin Harrison Jr., a lock to be top five? A near lock. Are all any of those... Or any of those things guaranteed? No, nothing's guaranteed in life. Charles Rogers, Detroit Lion wide receiver, was set to be a top five wide receiver. It never turned out. Beanie Wells, the running back, eventually went to the Cardinals. That guy was supposed to be an elite running back. It didn't work out. Sometimes things don't work out. Sometimes players don't develop. Johnny Manziel, best quarterback in college football history, some would say, didn't translate at all to NFL level. Not, nothing's guaranteed. But Marvin Harrison Jr., JD5, these are two guys, in my opinion, Odunze being almost more guaranteed than any other player as well, are three guys that I believe are almost locks at the National Football League level. Again, almost being the key word. There's never a guarantee. Never a guarantee. This is great news. Baker Mayfield or Fields, is this a potential decision that the, the, the Falcons are weighing over? Or is this a nothing burger? Is this a made-up? you know, farce that people are trying to just pedal out there to get clicks and views. Some people say, I do that. That's fine. You can, you can take whatever you want. I'm here breaking down tangible news sources that may or may not be fabricating stuff to get clicks and views, and we break it down and assess it, but that's what you can accuse me of. You can't accuse me of spreading a rumor when your boy's a news show. Your boy handles, collects, and, and pulls things together. And when I'm making a non-news-based uh, take or bringing a non-news based thing to the table you know it because I'm not reporting on a piece of news that's on screen I'll pull sources up all the time I'll reference the sources you know when I'm talking about something that's being reported on sometimes I do have nothing but projection prediction all that of course you know that but the APM show here Monday through Friday is typically and always will be centered around news your news show your one-stop shop to find out what's going on around the NFL and fantasy football worlds that's what this show's for that's why I'm here Monday through Friday 8 p.m Eastern we've been late the last couple weeks because your boy's been doing a lot of different things but I promise we'll get more on track eight o'clock don't be late be here at eight soon we'll we'll be doing that on the regular i'm sorry about being late lately uh baker mayfield fields my take on this is this if it is even true that this is floated out or somehow some way the falcons organization has made it clear they like baker this could be kind of more smoke than anything to try and get maybe the you know the fields deal more cemented in with the chicago bears hey we're tempted to go look at baker you better you know not try and mess with us oh hey uh we've been thinking about kirk cousins a lot lately we might prefer kirk cousins more what 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 yeah this report here from the score uh is re referencing that uh the falcons prefer kirk cousins over justin fields for potential qb spot next year where'd this come from I don't really know where uh, the score got this and how it really um, uh, transpired or what is their source. Everybody's source is completely, uh, you know, unknown. So I'm looking at their post right now. The score, um, it's just a writer, Paul Allen, apparently. Uh, let's see, where, where is that at? Yeah, I don't know. There's nothing. There's no, hey, this came from this or speaking at the combine, so-and-so said this. Nothing. It's just this report. Report. Falcons prefer, where's the source? I don't know. Paul Allen's the guy right here at the bottom. You have to ask him. I have no idea. I'm here to just break it down. I'm here to just tell you, do I believe it to be true? That's all I have. That's all I have. I'm here to break it down. Sometimes I don't break the actual first piece of news I'm not usually going to be the one that's out there sending it out to the ether. I'm the one receiving the football and then telling you what I think. That's what this show is. Translation. Prediction. Do I think this is true? I feel like I feel like it could be. It could be, it might not be, who knows? I don't think they're going to telegraph this. Why would the why would they telegraph what they want and let the uh, the, the opponent of who is racing to try and get Cousins know they like Cousins more than Fields. Why would they let other teams know that they like Fields over Cousins and let the teams that are competitively going to be after Fields when the new league year officially starts? Why would they let anybody know? To me, without any source at all, even coming from the score, I don't feel like this is a very accurate, uh, concrete piece of news. 
I think it's possible that this is on their mind. I think that Kirk Cousins is 100% in their, their wheelhouse of quarterbacks to bring in, no doubt about it. Do I think they prefer Fields over Cousins? I don't think so. I think coming off an Achilles tear, older player, trying to build something for the long term and the now, Fields is the only pick. I, I would say the, the percentage of reliability on this, if I had to guess, and I'm just guessing, is about 5%. I think the probability of this being the, the case, 5% chance. Do I think Cousins is in the conversation of one of the top three options for the Falcons? 100% chance. Big difference. Big difference because this is long-term. Fields is long-term and now. Cousins is n now. Not very long-term. Coming off an Achilles tear. I, I don't know that this is exactly what you want, but it's certainly one of the top three options. It is Fields. It is Cousins. I don't even think Baker's number three. I think that's more smoke than anything. I think Baker's probably in their top, you know, five, six, seven choices. But I think they probably like Penix Jr., Bo Nix, maybe even J.J. McCarthy. I don't like J.J. McCarthy uh, more than Cousins. We don't know. I don't like, maybe J.J. McCarthy and Baker are clear, clear, like close. But I, I don't know how I feel about J.J. McCarthy right now. Penix Jr., Bo Nix, I have those probably above Kirk Cousins because of the potential long-term impact and because of how much I like Penix Jr. I'm different, though. Uh, some people feel very, very differently about that. Uh, why don't we have these these uh, Super Chats showing up on my screen right now? I, I restarted my system. I don't know what's going on here. Let me get these Super Chats on here. Perps dropping a $20 hauler. Perps to the, to the moon. Perps, appreciate you. Alert. Super Chat alert. Perps, appreciate you, my boy. Perps says, let me clear my throat. We have 100 live and only 33 thumbs up. Now, we got 108 now and only 40 thumbs up. Perps ain't happy. Please do your part. Wipe your feet. Smitty doesn't like dirty feet. Do it live. 75 thumbs up by 9 p.m. Eastern, and I will rain down football on everybody. What he means by that is if you guys get to 75 thumbs, thumbs up by uh, two minutes, You've got two minutes to get the 75 thumbs up, and there's 40 of them. And he's going to rain down gifted memberships. I think that's what he means. You don't have to do that if that's not what you mean, Perps. But you know Perps pretty well. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised. But if you guys you guys have a minute and a half to get the 41 thumbs up to 75, and there's 103 of you to do it. If you don't want a gifted membership, I get it. That's your that's your prerogative. You have It's a free country. Gifted memberships? No, thank you. I don't want one. Perps with another 20 says... Paul Allen is the Vikings TV play-by-play -play announcer and hosts the most popular sports talk show on KFAN, KFAN, uh, and the Twin Cities. PA uh, potentially has inside information with his access and relationships with the Vikings organizations. Very good information. Thank you, Perps. I don't know who he is, so all I know is the score's pretty decent source. Um, do I think that they prefer... Cousins over Fields. Maybe Perps' answer, because I didn't need clarification. I don't have any information on Paul Allen, and I have no no source here to look at. I would say maybe I up that to, to maybe 10, 8 or eight or 10 percent then. But still, I, I believe even whoever's leaking that to Paul Allen, or if that's just his expectation, or whoever's taking Paul Allen's, Allen's comments and trying to turn it into news, that might be not even be Paul Allen's fault. This might be his, hey, I kind of think they, they would like Cousins more than Fields. Take it, Jimmy. Jimmy runs over to social media, types up a graphic, puts it on screen, and now it looks like it's being spoken as a clear, hard line fact. So I still would give it 8 to 10%, which is still a significant number at the end of the day. But I think Fields, by far, is the much better long-term option when you consider you know, how old Kirk Cousins is and he's coming off an Achilles tear. Fields is just getting going in some respects. But thank you, Perps, for another $20 hauler. Uh, out of alert. Super chat alert. Perps with the 20 wad. Perps appreciate you. This one's from Superfish. Uh, Superfish says, uh, Stefan Ross, who loves Tua. Mike McDaniel was hired to elevate Tua, and he's doing it. Also, McDaniel learned from Tua's injury, which is why he put HN on IR instead of uh, the three-week return. Says Superfish. I appreciate your take, Superfish. We agree most of the time, but I do not think Tua Tagovailoa is even remotely close to being better than Fields long term. 
and I think he's a, a potential one hit away. You can learn from it, but concussions are an unknown territory, and even a concussion expert will tell you no one knows enough about concussions to try and predict when somebody's susceptible to getting another one or if they're in the clear or even understanding them. They're very, very, very complicated. Concussions and and the brain is is a, a untapped territory that is so unknown to even the experts. And people that talk about it um, with clarity, uh, a lot of concussion experts and brain experts will tell you that's the first sign of somebody that doesn't know what they're talking about with, with concussions. So the NFL PA, I believe, spoke out saying that Tua Tagovailoa, according to a medical professional, is no more likely to get concussed than the average player, any other player in the NFL, which is an absolute travesty of a statement coming from a, a, a person that the NFL's PA was, was citing. And I, I'm, I'm trying to recall off memory how that went down, but when Tua was cleared to come back after a slew of, of concussions, that was what the NFL PA reported, that a doctor had reported that he was no likely, more likely to get concussed than the average player. In my opinion, 100% false. Because even though we know very little about concussions, the one thing we do know about concussions is every concussion you get, you're more susceptible to another concussion after the concussion. You get a second concussion, you're more susceptible to a concussion than you were before the second concussion, and so on. There have been weird, rare cases where Brandon Cooks is just a walking concussion. He hasn't had a concussion in a long time that we know of. Maybe he hides them, we don't know. But we do know that there are rare cases where someone reverts back, never has one again. But usually Steve Young, Kurt Warner, they continuously get concussed. And the, the more concussions you have, and I'm talking just even a handful, then you start getting concussed under the, the easiest of conditions. If you notice Tua Tagovailoa, when his last concussion or two, it was literally not a helmet hit at all. It was him going to the ground and basically his head just hit the ground each time. Little love tap and Tua was out like a light like that's the way that 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 works when you start getting concussed on just getting tackled you know you're in trouble it's not like someone whipped him down to the ground and his head just smashed against the ground he's getting tackled and hit so much so he starts doing like training in the off season uh i forget what was it it was uh not jujitsu uh whatever it was to try and not to to fall better to fall with his head up so he wouldn't hit his head on the ground and surely that's probably helped you know maybe he avoided a concussion doing that but he's still one hit away one blindside hit away where he can't protect himself with a with a good fall or a learned fall one hit away from his career not only being over but him not playing for multiple games if, if not the rest of the season depending on the severity of the concussion this is Miami Mike McDaniel is very much like Kyle Shanahan, reckless with his quarterbacks, reckless with his, some of his decision making, personnel decision making. Maybe they were very careful with with Achan, which I appreciate. But when they sent Tua Tagovailoa back into the game, when Miami Mike McDaniel sent Tua Tagovailoa back into the game after he was clearly concussed, and no one can argue with me that he didn't know he was concussed. He might have said he didn't know. He might have said this openly and publicly. I didn't know. You think I would have? send him back there if I knew he was concussed he was on the ground with his arms locked couldn't move his fingers they were bent like this and he couldn't move everyone and their mother watching from home knew he was concussed he got up stumbled they had to pick him up the fact that Miami Mike McDaniel who I do love in so many ways he's such a good schemer He's such a good offensive coordinator. He's got so many great qualities. For people to suggest that he didn't know, and for him to suggest that he didn't know Tua Tagovailoa was possibly concussed at least, if you want to use the word possibly, I call cap on that. I call lies on that. Because everyone and their mother knew. Everybody. And if for some crazy reason he had his back turned, he was drinking Kool-Aid, and he didn't look at anything, he was totally busy, he was taking, checking his phone, text message... He has people in place that should have told him. He and, and all that comes down on him. Bad decision making, bad understanding of who his quarterback should be, and, and Justin Fields is available. You know I love you, Superfish. I'm not yelling at you at all. This is just my take. We're going to sometimes disagree. This is my strong, strong opinion of Tua Tagovailoa's situation. I like Tua. Prayers up for Tua. If Tua stays healthy, Miami Mike McDaniel is so good. At offensive coordinating, he's such a savant when it comes to scheming. And, and just like Shanahan, Shanahan and my, at Miami Mike McDaniel are above everybody. It, Kingsbury's right there too, though. Above everybody in terms of scheme, 
architecting an offense. These are magicians. Kellen Moore now in Philly to take over as OC to fix the Philadelphia Eagles. He also is one of the most phenomenal OCs, in my opinion. Philly did amazing with that. Washington did amazing with Kingsbury. But Miami, Mike McDaniel, and, and Shanahan are, are head coaches. And they're so good at offensive coordinating and scheming, you think they're good head coaches. And I'm not saying Mike McDaniel isn't a, is a horrible coach, but he clearly has mismanaged a lot. His team is kind of not performing. And he even came out and said, I don't know, we're going to think, I don't know if we're going to take away my play calling. He was like self disciplining himself in front of the public eye. No one wants you to take away your coordinating and play calling, that's your biggest strength. But he was so disappointed in himself and how the Miami Dolphins finished the season when they had so much potential to be literally the number one team in their conference. They really did, let alone their division, that he was mad at himself. He was self-disciplining himself. He was saying, maybe I take away my play calling, maybe I don't. I don't know. He's very honest with the public. But he wasn't honest with the Tua Tagovailoa situation. I can tell you that. Or he was oblivious. Both are equally at fault in my opinion. But here's my point. To sit here and go, oh, we wouldn't take Penix Jr. here if he fell. We wouldn't take Bo Nix or move up to get those guys. Or, hey, let's go trade for Justin Fields and win a championship. To think that Tua Tagovailoa is better than Justin Fields for this situation for the long term is crazy to me. Tua Tagovailoa, by all accounts to a lot of people, is not a good enough quarterback anyway. And even if you like him, even if he can be developed... Maybe, maybe can he stay healthy? The odds are he probably won't. Again, Superfish, I love you. I hope you didn't take any of that as a, an attack on your stance. That's just, it just provokes my reaction. And I'm always going to be honest with you. That had nothing to do with Superfish. Uh, Hung like Hernandez, how do you like Penix Jr.? And how do you like Penix Jr.? And hate on Robbins. What are you, talk, what are you talking about there, Hung like Hernandez? I'm not sure what you mean there. I like Ryan Grubb and Penix Jr. together. Um, I appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you. Thanks for the super chat. Let's go. Uh, let's go straight. I think we got all the news covered. I think we got all the news covered. Um, and, and Superfish says, "Don't be surprised if the Dolphins take a QB at number twenty-one." That's what I'm saying. That's that's the solution. If you lock it here, here, let me make this point clear, Superfish. If you lock up Tua and you draft Penix Jr. if he falls, genius, absolute genius move. Love it. But if you lock up Tua, and same thing with the, the New York Jets. Let, let me be critical of the New York Jets. If the New York Jets pass on a quarterback here, mistake. I don't care what anybody says. Mistake. You just went through it all. All the bad that you went through. All the watching your talent waste away. Watching your defense lose its soul. The Jets defense literally lost its soul in the middle of the year. You, look, you looked over on the sideline and the Jets defense was like this. They're so down. They're so defeated, deflated. They're working their butt off, carrying this team over and over. And here's this, no offense to Robert Salah, but he, 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 I lost a lot of respect for him. I'm, I'm sitting there watching this guy allow Aaron Rodgers, fear of Aaron Rodgers. What if I bring a quarterback in and trade for somebody? What if I make a move? This fear of Aaron Rodgers and letting Aaron Ro keeping Aaron Rodgers happy uh, it, it really it really disappointed me. I'm very disappointed in Robert Sala. If Robert Sala doesn't know that he needs to draft a quarterback at 10 and, and have a hard conversation with Aaron Rodgers, bring him into the conversation. Help help make help make the decision. Help not make the decision for that angry Angus that said you said Aaron Rodgers wasn't a good evaluation of quarterback. I said Aaron Rodgers could train someone. Help with the process. Talk about the offense. Talk about best fits. Who would make a good fit? What type of passer would make a good fit? These are all knowledges that Aaron Rodgers can tap into. And you're keeping him happy and involved. And willing and wanting to help groom somebody. But if the Jets walk away from this 10 pick and don't think about their future when they have an Achilles recovered quarterback that's 87 years old who could have an amazing year, and I hope he does, and New York Jets could literally be a top four team in the National Football League in 2024. That's how good Aaron Rodgers is. That's how good the New York Jets are, but you have to plan for the future. You have to plan for injury. You can't leave your defense in the lurch again another year. Watch Sauce Gardner and the boys lower their heads on the sideline and just literally look defeated. Like, why are we playing? 
if your team's winning three or four or five games on the whole year, let's say, why are you out there ruining a year of your career, putting mileage on your body? Okay, that's like saying, let's go, let's drive 1,800, no, let's drive, let's drive 3,000 miles to Vegas in your brand new vehicle, okay? And I tell you, hey, when you get there, I'm going to tell you to turn around because Vegas is closed. And you got to drive 3,000 miles back. You put 6,000 miles on your brand new vehicle. Are you happy? Or do you look like Sauce Gardner and the boys and you go, yeah, that was, that sucks. Now my car's older. Now my mileage is there. I've I've ruined another. I don't have another year to give the NFL. I've lost a year to give the NFL. I've lost a year to ring chase. You can't put your defense or your offense, Brees Hall. Brees Hall's got four or five years left. This is a running back. Let's be honest. He's got four or five years left, and he could be the number one running back in the National Football League for four or five years. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, Brees Hall is eight foot tall he will always answer the mother freaking call don't let him fall in the third don't stall just give batman the freaking football he's brief he's brief he does a hole of a job a hole of a job a hole of a job reese hall please report to the moon he does a hole of a job Get Brees. As I was saying, Brees Hall, even though he could be number one running back in the National Football League for three, four years, or at least have a couple of those years, he has a four to five year shelf life. You can't waste it. You got to go draft a quarterback. This is me talking about a team I love. Garrett Wilson to the moon, Aaron Rodgers to the moon, Brees Hall to the moon, whatever wide receiver they bring into the moon. But real talk, they need a quarterback here. They need to prepare and plan and be prepared for injury or just take over if Aaron Rodgers even goes out and is too old to play. Well, he looked like Brett Favre at the end of his career and they got to replace him and maybe he gets benched. In, in this season or next season draft Michael Penix Jr. draft Bo Nix at least draft someone like that or JJ McCarthy I don't want him but whatever the case may be you do it you do it live you protect yourself Seattle same thing Geno Smith not it you're not winning a Super Bowl with Geno Smith I hate to tell you you're not you're not you're not <laughs> you know you're just not are you winning a Super Bowl with Michael Penix Jr. I don't know. Could you? Maybe. If he's what I believe he could be, yes. Or you could at least be a contending team every year. Are you going to be that contending team every year with Geno Smith? No. Oh, but Smitty, Geno Smith sits so good. I'm the defender of the universe, Smitty. I'm Captain Saber quarterback. And I love Geno, and you're going to be wrong about Geno. Fine. That's I don't care. Fight your fight. I, I really don't care. I disagree. Geno Smith is not a elite quarterback. You're never winning a Super Bowl. You're never going to a national championship game with Geno Smith. You might with Penix Jr. You might with Penix Jr. National championship game. Uh, uh, conference championship game. Did I say national championship game? Well, I'm thinking that because of Ryan Grubb going to a national championship game. He lives in championship games. Ryan Grubb knows that. Ryan Grubb, Seattle Seahawks offensive coordinator, wants to take his team to the version of the national championship game. He wants to take him to the NFC championship game. And he wants to win the, the NFC West. He wants to deliver uh, uh, what this team's kind of capable of doing if they've got the right quarterback. They got a good quarterback. They got a good quarterback. They have a great quarterback? No, they don't have a great quarterback. They have a good quarterback. Uh, let's see here. I don't know if my, my super chat alert is working. It's kind of frustrating that it's not. Let me see if I can fix this. And, uh, and open this up real quickly. Hold on, let me see if I can fix this. I saved it again. Maybe it should work now. I don't know if Super Chats should be on screen. Gifted memberships should be on screen. We've got uh, 69 thumbs up, 120 of you in here. Phone lines are open, dial in. Call into the show. Call, call, call into the show. Phone lines are open. This video right here is going to change really quickly too. This video right here is the uh, mock draft of um, the rookie or the yeah the rookie only super flex mock draft on the Dynasty channel. So go check out 
go check out that video. Superfish says, I'm not disagreeing, just pointing out that uh, that it's uh, Stefan Ross who loves Tua and McDaniel is learning on the job. I uh, appreciate you, Superfish. You know that. Yeah, he's learning on the job, and that's okay, but I feel like it should be pretty easy, in my opinion, to know to know that Tua Tagovailoa, as your starting quarterback, is probably not the long-term answer. And to be talking about locking him down long-term feels about as dumb as locking down Danny Dimes last offseason. Does anybody disagree? Tua Tagovailoa on a mega deal... Right now, feels as dumb as last year when the Giants were like, hmm, let's give Danny Dimes a big fat contract in New York. Let's bring Danny Dimes in, lock him down. It almost feels as dumb as Russell Wilson's contract. It almost feels as dumb, but can't be, as Deshaun Watson's $230 million guarantee contract. Imagine if the, 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 the Browns, who are a phenomenal team top to bottom, had a different quarterback. Can you imagine? The Browns are so good. They're so good. They made it. They made it to a a, a playoffs, looking like a a total threat. Obviously, lose to the Texans, but this is a team without even a, a good signal caller. And I know Flacco played good, but Flacco turned into a pumpkin. Like we knew exactly, we knew he would. Uh, Travis, you're live. Hey, um, and the Browns don't have a first round pick this year, right? <sighs> Yeah, the Browns don't have a. I don't think they do. The Browns don't have a first round pick. No, they uh, next year they do they have one next year. Yeah, their their first round pick is right here, twenty three. It's Houston has it. Ziggy, do the yeah, Cleveland Browns right. have a first round pick in twenty twenty four? Or damn, in the damn it, NFL draft, damn it, the the meant Browns to say twenty five. They have the tenth Z- pick in the first Ziggy round. off. He, he doesn't even know what he's talking about. Hold on, let me find the br- Browns. I was say he wasn't even right. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he says they have the 10th pick in the 2024. <laughs> Ziggy, you suck, bro. <laughs> Browns draft picks 2025. Let's go to let's go to Google real quick. Uh, the Browns, according to this right here, the Browns have uh, their first round pick. They finally got their first round pick. So they have their first round pick, according to this, 2025, the, the second round pick, the third round pick, the fourth round pick. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, I I forget where I saw it, but I saw something saying the um, the worst kept secret in this year's draft is that the Giants want to trade up for a quarterback. Who? Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. You know, I've seen I've seen those reports too. Again, I'll report on it too if I feel like you know it's circling the right way. You know, like everyone's reporting something right now, so I can't go live on everything. But if I, yeah. do, if I, but it's a good, it's a good thing to bring up for sure. I don't, I love talking about anything. Um, if I start seeing that circulating in a little bit bigger circles, I'll certainly be going live on that. But the Giants, um, how do you do that when you just gave Danny? I mean, you can do it because you can get out of Danny's contract next year. There is an out next year to right. where it, it's a dead cap hit for sure. But this year, it's. How brutal is that? How brutal is that? It's that's crazy. Well, I'll tell you what though, it would, it would, it's the right thing to do in for my sure, hundred percent. Cut your losses, when, you know, you have to. Hundred percent. I'm so sick of these teams. I get these guys are worried about getting fired and holding their job, but you know, maybe be aggressive and they yeah. might keep you around too if you show your. You hundred thousand percent. Turn things around, especially in this quarterback draft. Michael Penix Jr. is the number one quarterback in this entire draft if the first three quarterbacks are not in the draft. And I know you could say, well, that yep. <laughs> that makes sense, Smitty. The number four guy is number one if the first three guys aren't there. I know that sounds stupid, but I just mean that like in any, like, for example, take Penix Jr. and throw him into last year's draft class. Like, he could have been argued as the number one. Like, he just can't even compete with May and, and Caleb and JD5. It, like he is in another year, I guess I should word it that way. In another year, he's the number one qu- potential quarterback option. I, Bo Nix could be the number one potential quarterback option in another year. So, like the New York Giants are in such a good situation, it just feels like, oh, I'm getting the third or fourth or fifth quarterback. Like you can't look at it like that. You got to say, okay, this quarterback year is so good, this guy could be top ten 
in the National Football League, Michael Penix Jr. or Bo Nix. And if I'm the Giants, I take one of them. You're 100% right. It's the 100% right thing to do. But it does feel like you don't know what you're doing. It might get people fired. And the problem you have here is GM, head coach, they're trying to make decisions to win this year so they're not fired next year. So that's where a lot of teams will make horrible decisions because they're not worried about the long-term effect of the of the decision because they're worried about next year. And so they think to themselves, right, well, if Danny it. Dimes works, let's grab Neighbors right now. And then now Neighbors is stuck in New York catching footballs from Danny freaking right. Dimes. You know, and, and then... And then to a giant... Sorry, go ahead. No, that's right. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, to which I actually kind of, you know, turned and they own the team, so what are you going to say? But I turned the blame and with that onto the owners. I, I think, you know, sometimes you got to just fire someone who's not working. But this whole, like, you go, give a guy the reins to take over a team, it's like sometimes the whole first year has to be washing out what the last regime had. Then the next year you start putting things together, and then the third year you can get it going. I understand things move fast nowadays, but... Some of these, you know, like in Carolina, for example, it's like he'll hire a guy and be talking about firing 10 games into the season. And it's like, do you do you have any plan at all? You know, it's like there has to be some trust with these owners and coaches that they can do something. It's like, why hire a guy if you don't trust them? Yeah. Um, again, the crazy part about uh, decision making is, you know, like, like Jed York, for example, in, in San Francisco. I mean... God, he doesn't hold, he has to hold it, held people accountable, you know? And, and the thing about it is like Brock Purdy worked out. And so now Kyle Shanahan is not at all, or John being held accountable for Trey Lance. Like if, if right. Brock, if Brock Purdy didn't work out, Kyle Shanahan would have been fired at the end of this year, most likely, yeah. uh, John, you know, they're getting the extensions, everything's glorious. And, but, but again, Adam Peters is the one the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain that I believe had a lot to do with almost everything relating to all that. Maybe John and Kyle had a majority to do with the Christian McCaffrey trade because both of the families are very close to Christian McCaffrey. John Lynch's family is very close to Christian McCaffrey. Uh, uh, Kyle Shanahan, obviously close to Christian McCaffrey and, and Ed McCaffrey and all that. So th th that was a great move by John and Kyle if they were the ones in charge of that. And I, I have no no reason to believe Adam Peters had a huge hand in that. He might have. But I don't, I, I'm going to give credit in advance without knowing to both John and Kyle um, equally, let's call it. So that was a great move. Great move. Great, great move. Um, part of me wonders, though, if there's pushback from Kyle Shanahan just because he hates to have people that, that aren't yes men and he hates to have people that have more knowledge mm -hmm. than him him on any level you know and I could see him being like yeah. well Christian McCaffrey is going to try and dominate things here or whatever because he's such a, a force but that's just me speculating uh, I just and I don't hate Shanahan I just don't I'm just being honest with my assessment if I hated Shanahan I wouldn't be in here every time I trash him I say he's one of the best offensive minds in the game I always preface it because I want people to understand that I, I'm at least giving credit to him. I'm a, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to be very very openly honest about everything about him when I'm saying something negative. He's a savant. He's like uh, he's like uh, what's that famous chess player? It's like the best chess player in the world. He shows up late to all of his things and uh, what's his name? Yeah, I forget his name. Oh God, um, it got uh, Mag 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 Magnus Magnus. Is his name? Ma is, yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> this guy comes in with his messed up hair. You know, he's a prototypical, like, chess playing gamer, computer building, like, you know, looking dude. Uh, probably eats bacon and, and, and just that's all he eats at his computer. It, it, like, this guy just looks like the complete, like, prototypical, you know, guy like that. And he, wa he, he walks in on purpose late. He has, like, 20 seconds left in the game. He walks in, Magnus, and he'll just, like, play and just insult the person, win, make him surrender, and, like, literally walk out. Well, this guy shows up late, makes mistakes, and starts losing. And, and, and he starts losing, and then people say Magnus has lost it. He literally has the capability of beating, I think, anybody. He just doesn't apply himself or doesn't focus. For, I feel like Shanahan's like the Magnus of, of the coaches. Like, I feel like he doesn't, uh, yeah. he, he's so good at a, a couple amazing things. He's so good at offensive coordinating, but this guy lets a lot of these other faults of his get in the way. Like 
him not putting Trey Lance in, I, I have I have no clue what made him wait. And, and the reason he waited was Jimmy Garoppolo. Like I said yesterday on the news, I don't know if I have it on here. Let me see if I can find the piece of news. Here it is. Uh, Trey Lance, uh, I was very, uh, very very happy for Trey Lance um, with this piece of news. The Dallas Morning News reports that the Cowboys will pick up Trey Lance's $4.25 million summer roster bonus. This is fantastic. I love that, that yeah. Trey Lance is there as a safety net for Dak Prescott. And I'm not wishing injury upon Dak or anything like that. But if Trey got a, a shot in the Dallas offense, I think he would. Awesome. I think he would do well. And anybody that says Trey Lance busted, he played three and a half games. You can't bust in three and a half games. We have no idea what good or bad what Trey Lance could even do. I do fear we're at the tipping point where we'll never know. And if even if he got a shot, he'd fail because he doesn't know how to play football anymore. Like that's the part that's so scary. It's like you could be the best. A basketball player in in you know around let's say you're 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 going into high school and you decide you're just not going to play high school basketball you know you're the best basketball player you're scouted to be the best basketball player you take four years off of playing basketball you play in your backyard you go to the park you play but you don't play organized basketball for four years and then you try and walk on a college you're not going to look the same you're going to lost your edge you wouldn't have developed and progressed with everybody else to stay ahead of them it's the same concept. You you go to the NFL, and you're a, kind of above everybody in terms of like where you are coming in. Trey Lance is a high prospect, high draft capital, a lot of talent. And then you don't use him. And then you don't use him. And then he gets hurt because you run him up the gut like a, like a, like a halfback. And he gets hurt, comes back. You don't even give him a shot. You don't even give him a shot. Trey Lance, if he fails, it's because of Shanahan, not him. And I know it's one of those predictions I said he was going to be great and people think I'm digging my heels in. I'm not predicting big things out of him. I'm saying I'm just happy and glad he's in a backup role in a great offense. If something happens, we'll see him. And how 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 beautiful would it be? And the Niner fans can tell me how they feel about this. How beautiful would it be if this guy somehow, again, knock on wood, hope Dak stays healthy. Somehow, some way, this guy gets in, in the Cowboys system and blows up. Like that's gonna burn Niner fans so bad, oh my uh, God. It, it, and I for, I firmly believe if Trey Lance was in the Niners offense this year, he would have thrived. <laughs> I, I don't know if he would have been as good as Brock. I'm not necessarily saying that, but he would have thrived. And and this system's so good. Guess who, guess who Brock Purdy's played with that Trey Lance has not? Christian McCaffrey. How are we gonna judge Brock Purdy versus Trey Lance right. when Trey Lance never played with Christian McCaffrey? When McCaffrey or uh, a piece of uh, Trent, Trent Williams is uh, is not in the game, or Debo, uh, Debo he can survive a little bit more. But how does Brock Purdy play when Trent Williams is out, like trash? How how is Brock Purdy playing when Christian McCaffrey is out of the lineup? Not as good. I, I I would love for someone to see this guy in a great situation. I would love to watch their eyes. And, and their soul crush when they think, uh, you know, he's trash. And then they watch him throwing footballs to C.D. Lamb and navigating the the pocket. I, I really, really hope he gets a shot. I don't know. I just don't know if it's too late. I, I, I hope it's not too late. Yeah. I forget how we got on that topic well, or what, what we were discussing, but. Um, <clears throat> I forget now. We're, I called uh, in. I was talking okay. about the Giants. You Get called in. I, let's back. Let's go back from the beginning. I went live. I screamed. You called in. <laughs> Penix Jr. Penix Jr. And Trey Lance. Who knows? Oh, Sh- Shanahan. Um, Shanahan. Chargers. Savant. Giants. Giants. Shanahan was Savant. Yeah. Uh, but he I don't know. Doesn't Whatever. Put it all together. Whatever. Danny yeah. Dime. I think that Danny Dime sucks. There we go. We're back on track. Yeah. Um, I was calling actually to talk about um, Magnus with Penix Jr. <laughs> Yeah, Penix yeah. Jr. Love him, love him, love him. Yeah, I, he would be the one guy that, I, like, personally as a Patriots fan, if they traded out of that three pick, if they got just a boatload, they were able to get Penix Jr. I could be okay with that. I don't think I'd be okay with it. And I mean, I could be wrong. Parky could be great. Bo Nix could be great. But on paper, as of the draft. I wouldn't be happy with that. But if they, if it was Penix Jr. that they got, but, now but, they'd have to get a lot back for that. Oh, uh, three New, you mean out. you mean New England to get JJ? 
Is that what you mean? No, just in general. Just oh. in general. Uh, okay. I don't think they're trading JJ. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 I, no. I, I'm sorry. I, I was reading a comment when I, and I, I got sidetracked, and I, you're saying you wouldn't be happy if what happened? I, I was saying Penix Jr. would be the only QB I'd be okay with them getting outside oh. of those top three. Gotcha. Yeah, that's like right. That's what I assumed you were saying. All, all they're talking about in New England now is training out of that pick. God, that's horrible, they're, bro. They're, they're, that's horrible. They're, they're convinced here that um, that Jaden Daniels is going one or two. Yeah, and they I don't too. want May. Look, so, l- let me let me let me speak that, very clearly. Talk here. Let me speak very clearly to the but camera just, right now. I agree with. You, but. Let me speak very, very clearly to the camera right now. Um, let's see. Do I have? Where's my? This screen. Okay, I'll go back to this screen. JD five, in my opinion, only rises, and there is going to be fantasy football circles for sure, but NFL circles all over, except for Chicago. I think they're sold on Caleb. I think they're blinded. They got blinders on. They're, they're, they're zoning in on them. But who knows? Maybe they change their mind. But I don't think they want this running quarterback that JD is perceived as, as versus Caleb. He's, he's more like an Aaron Rodgers. Good scrambler. Amazing. Good runner for sure. Better runner than Aaron Rodgers ever was. But but he's more of a prototypical passer, they think. I think they don't want to go replace Fields with what they believe to be Fields. JD5. JD5 is going to be better than Fields. JD5 to Atlanta. Way over fields to Atlanta. Let me make that point abundantly clear as well. JD5 to me is better than AR5. It, it, potentially. So I think you're going to see NFL circles just from combine conversations start to make this narrative change that JD5 is the second quarterback. I think we start hearing people very soon talk about JD5 being the number one quarterback. I don't think it'll infect in a positive way the entire NFL but by the time this guy works out, you're going to see a big shift go in the direction of a majority of people view it that way. I just hope to God Chicago doesn't take him. Because I don't trust Shane Waldron to develop anybody. JD5 is the best thing that could happen to any of these teams. There's even more than Marvin Harrison Jr. Would I rather have Fields and Marvin Harrison Jr. over just JD5 and whatever else you get? Yes. But mm-hmm. but other than that, Fields with Marvin, JD5 is the only answer at one, two, or three. Especially one. I, I just hope Chicago, if Chicago trades out of it and keeps Fields, good God. I don't know who lands in this one pick. Hopefully it's great for JD5. You know, maybe it's Seattle. Maybe it's Atlanta. Maybe Atlanta trades up. You know what I mean? Like, who the hell knows? Maybe could jump up. Patriots could, they yeah, maybe, about that too. maybe they jump up. Maybe Chicago says, but but Chicago would have to. So th- th- there's, there's okay, actually, that's a really, really, really good point. If, let's say, Chicago did want to keep fields, you trade Chicago, New England and Chicago trade, you get a future first rounder, Chicago. They trade down to three, they get a future first round pick to make that move. Absolutely. And New England gets JD5. Then Chicago keeps fields or they can make a decision later to draft a quarterback if they want. If Caleb were to fall for some reason, they could get him at three. If his character or something happens, or they could take men. right? Or or they, they like just men. or they just draft Marvin Harrison Jr. here and keep Fields. Certainly right. in the realm of possibility. The only reason I think that won't play out, and it really should play out that way, to be honest with you, that's the smartest move for the Chicago Bears. I don't know that Fields survives Shane Waldron's development process, but it's still the best move probably. But the reason I think it won't shake out that way is because the vibe and the conversations and the communications coming out of this situation especially from polls and everybody is 100% not supportive of Justin Fields there's nothing being said like he's our guy we really love him if if we keep him we're gonna win um we're gonna do what's best for the organizations what you're hearing we're gonna do right by Fields is what you're hearing you don't say do right by somebody when you're keeping them you, if you if you're keeping yeah. him, you're saying right. something like like if, if if I'm if I'm letting Travis go from his moderating duties, <laughs> let's just say Tra- <laughs> Travis, you're on the phone. The last thing in the world you're going to be hearing from me if I'm debating whether to to take them away from you or not. Let's say you were in here cursing like a sailor at everybody, calling people names. Uh, if I was going to take the mod duties away from him, 
and I was contemplating it. The last word, the last words I'm using is we're going to do right by Travis so we can go to another channel and, and become a mod and everything. Like, we're going to do right by him. We're not going to drag it out. That's not supportive. I, that doesn't mean I'm keeping it. I've got my arm around Travis. So I'm saying, look, Travis made a mistake. You know, he started, he started blocking Superfish. And he started screaming and yelling at Jose uh, uh, in the chat. And, he didn't and, do that. And, yeah, he, he, he has done that. But I'm not. I'm not telling him we're gonna do right by him and figure it out. You know, we're we're gonna we're gonna take a look at all of our options. I'm saying Travis ain't going anywhere. I don't care how many times he blocks Superfish. Yeah, that, that's literally. Uh, that, that's like with all due respect. Sorry, you're saying to someone, you know, we'll, we'll do we'll do right by them. It's like a consolation. Yeah. You know? I'm sorry, Superfish. It, it will always undo it. Okay. I don't know why it's always Superfish though. Um, I don't know why either. Uh, breaking news, breaking news. Hold on, we got breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. Uh, Travis Rowe. <laughs> we interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin from the FantasyFootballShow.com news desk. Travis Rowe is remaining a moderator here at the channel after strong deliberation. And uh, we also have a special guest on the phone line right now. The man goes by several names. Uh, I'll give you one guess. You you will need zero guesses after I play this little intro form. Here he goes. The Bruce oh, is God. loose. What's up, Brucey? Appreciate you being on the phone line here, pal. What can I do for you? I got a, a question about Atlanta and, and Trey Lance. Too. What if he goes there instead of... Uh, Terry. Instead of Fields. <sighs> If who goes where? Trey Lance goes where? Trey. Atlanta? Atlanta. Well, he he will. I mean, he, I guess you never know. Just no. p- picking up uh, picking up uh, Trey Lance's um, summer roster bonus or whatever isn't necessarily meaning they won't trade him. Uh, but I, I haven't heard anything like that. Look, I'll I'll say this. Anything's an upgrade over Ritter. You know, Bruce. Bruce, we. I would. Your mother should be playing quarterback. For the Atlanta Falcons, right now, I, I would I would say 100 percent, 100 percent put put her in over Ritter. Okay, um, everything is an upgrade over Ritter. I think Trey Lance is not the worst gamble to take, but it's too big of a gamble given, like I said with Miami Mike McDaniel, and this is I'm coming from a place of honesty here. I'm very much rooting for Trey Lance, but I believe I have a pretty unbiased take majority of the time. As much as I love Trey Lance, you can't take a gamble right now. You can't waste another year of Bijan's contract. You can't waste another year of Kyle Pitts not developing right. You can't waste another year of Drake London not developing right. You really got to get this one right. And Trey Lance is still a very big project. And not to mention, I, I just don't think it's it's the right time. Trey Lance needs to, I think, develop more in the offense. And if Dak goes down, Trey needs to be embedded in this offense for another half a year before I feel like Trey could walk in and kind of like piecemeal together a win, gain a little more traction, gain a little, you know what I mean? That's how Trey Lance will develop. Yeah. Trey Lance is not somebody that's ready right now. He can't be because his team's been, you know, team gave up on him. He's literally had a setback. Every step forward Trey Lance took, Shanahan picked him up and put him eight steps backwards. Shanahan probably ruined him. I don't know that Trey Lance will ever develop. That's not the solution here. As much as I like him and everything, you need a Fields. You need a Cousins. You need a Russell Wilson. Or if you're going to take a gamble, you gamble on Penix Jr. or Bo Nix and you take it to the moon. You take it potentially all the way to Saturn. But that's the only move here, Brucey. It's a good conversation piece, but it's not something that you can consider at all. Oh, I hit the wrong button. But by the way, go over to thefantasyfootballshow.com. Link in the description. Thefantasyfootballshow.com. Trade calculator, bold prediction, articles, video courses. Your boy in 2003 came out with a content site and I've never stopped since I've been creating content longer than anybody you can find but Matthew Barry and a few other big dog sources out there I, there was like 10 of us in 2003 slash 2004 and there was no trade calculator open face customer face instant bait trade calculator I developed this thing 
and I've been creating tools and innovating in the space since 2003. Some of you were in diapers sharding your pants when I started developing this site right here. So go check it out, thefantasyfootballshow.com. Get your year-round information over there. I didn't mean to hit that, I swear. But why not plug it while it's there? Um, uh, yeah. Uh, Bruce, was, what else you got? I was going to say real Yeah. Oh, go, go, hold on. Travis, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to chime in real quick on the Lance thing. Um, I, I think it was DeVault said it earlier in the chat, but I've seen a ton of people say this, so I'm not just calling out DeVault. A lot of people keep saying the Cowboys need to get rid of Dak and just let Lance start, but they can't do that because of what you just said. There's, it's, he has to, I mean, he has to show something ridiculous in training camp. You know, and, and, and it's about, the, to be yeah. With Lance, it's got to be a nice surprise. No, not looking over his shoulder, his confidence is fragile. Like, and again, I don't wish injury upon Dak, but for Lance to develop right, it needs to be a, a like a, a race of God type of event. It's got to be. If you put him in a lineup somewhere, this scared dog, he's scared to death, is going to go out there shivering, like, oh my God, am I going to get hurt again? Am I going to fail? This is my last chance. He literally needs to absorb the Cowboys offense for another like total full off season, absorb the offense week one, week two, week three. And if Dak goes out and fractures his leg, rips his ankle off, whatever. And I don't wish that upon him at all. Trey Lance has nothing to look over his shoulder about. So he's not going to be going like this all year. Right. He's going to, he's going to, he's going to have the, his back against the wall. When your back's against the wall, what do you do? Bruce, do you look behind you to see who's behind you when your back's against the wall? Or do you know that you're you're looking at everything in front of you and you're good to go? I don't know about you, but I, I don't need to look behind me when my back's against the wall. That's what Trey Lance would be doing if he walked into a Dallas Cowboy starting lineup in week seven. You know, if you throw him anywhere, trade him, put pressure on him, he isn't ready. He's gonna crumble. You got you gotta put him into a safe space, unfortunately. And then and then if he flourishes there, then all of a sudden he gains all that confidence back and then boom, he's there. It's fragile. Yeah. He's he's a fragile Freddy that, right now. That was a Miss Robeson quote on my mom's question because she's like, well, if we don't get field, she's like, next best. She's like, she wants Lance if she doesn't get field. Your mom, your mom is a smart football mind. Okay, I'm gonna tell you that right now. She's not wrong um, that he would be exciting, but the, you you can do better. Your options. The, first of all, worst case scenario, every every. Every ang angry Angus and Monday morning uh, Morgan is going to sit here and tell me, oh, Smitty, no one's giving up a first rounder. But I believe your mom would probably agree with me if push comes to shove and everybody's going after Fields like he's the, the new PlayStation 9 coming out in advance. Somebody went into the future, created the PlayStation 9. They bring it back and there's five of them or there's one of them. There's one copy of them. That's it. Just one. Guess what's happening? Everyone is going to overpay. So if if everybody wants fields, he's one of one. And we don't know what the demand is because the new league year hasn't started. People are trying to play stealth mode. A lot of a lot of uh, people are trying to potentially you know create rumors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We don't know what the demand is, but if the demand is high, you could see Fields go for this number eight overall pick, and you kick back a second so that it's a trade down, not a surrendering of the first rounder. It's kind of like saying there's a line of a hundred people, right? I'm not sending you to the very back of the line. I'm moving you to the middle of the line or whatever. You're 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 swapping. It's not you're swapping second rounder and first rounder. It's not ideal. It's probably not going to be necessary. But Bruce, I'm telling you, you don't go after Trey Lance, who I like in Dallas. In that situation, maybe it develops. But you give up the eight pick in some sort of trade down to the second round if you have to. If you have to. There is no answer other than we have Fields, Cousins, or, you know, or or you, or you if you're that set on Penix Jr., I'm fine with that too. I'm fine with Penix Jr. at eight if you were bold enough to do it. Bo Nix at eight. I like Bo Nix at eight as well. Those are all the solutions. The, but, but I would get Fields. Fields is the top solution. Fields is probably better than Penix Jr., at the end of the day, and I would surrender the eight pick for a second rounder if need be. Because remember, if you get that second rounder and you could draft, let's say, Leggett or or someone like that, then who cares? You got Leggett and Fields versus, you know, versus Penix Jr. and, 
You know what I mean? Like, a, like I'm fine. I'm yeah. fine. I'm fine with that. Or, or you could say a Dunze. Like, if you're gonna draft a Dunze here, I like. Dang. What? What was that, Bruce? Yeah. yeah. That was louder yeah. than. The, that wasn't me, guys. That was the boss horn going off. What was that? <laughs> I had these little uh, metal rods. They just fell off a uh, piece of wood. <laughs> It sounds like Bruce has shattered an entire kitchen of silverware, glasses. Chi is that Miss Bruce's china that you knocked china over all set. over the ground? Nah, china I'm working. That I, I think it. Where are you working? Or don't tell us where. But are you still doing the same job? You're still at the school. Yeah. a boy. I love Bruce is one of the hardest working people out there. Bruce, let's get Bruce a standing ovation. Bruce, appreciate you. Bruce, Brucey to the moon. Yeah. Yeah. Mashed potatoes. That sounded like Mama's Good China, on. though. That sounded like Mama's China getting knocked over. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, super, Bruce, hold on. Go ahead. Bruce just, uh, Bruce just, Bruce just knocked over the chemistry set. The science yeah, lab. that what well, you are in the science lab, aren't you, Bruce? What what <laughs> what room are you in, Bruce? What 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 facility? <laughs> Uh, it's a storage room. Oh, uh, was it? Was any of it glass or no? No. Oh, thank God. Br okay, Bruce gets go. to keep his job. He didn't knock over ten thousand dollars in flasks. <laughs> Can you imagine if he's like Smitty? I got a problem. I just knocked over twenty-seven petri dishes. We're, we're in. Some, we're in some trouble. Sci no science lab Monday. Bruce, yeah. I could tell you how to stack it, make it look like it fell over due to just like a, a box falling. You just basically just set a box that's up high right next to it. It'll look like it knocked it right over. Yep. You'd be fine. I'd figure it. We'd figure it out. We collectively come up with an excuse for you. All right, hold on one second. We gotta we gotta get Superfish. I'm free. Thank you. Love Travis too. Superfish, appreciate you. Um, where, did she get unblocked from another account or something? I don't know. No, I, th I think you're just joking around. Oh, oh okay. I, I didn't block her tonight. I know that. Not yet. Okay. Uh, super fish. Sorry. Uh, we got Terry Roberts in the house. Um, uh, one of our uh, longtime moderators. Uh, Terry, glad to see you here tonight. Smitty has the best show with the best people. Let's go. Appreciate your $5 hauler, Broski. You're the man, the myth, the legend. We got another $10 hauler, which always gets a moon shot when you drop a 10 spot on the channel. Perp's dropping the moon. a 10 wad. Perpy says... Uh, Perp says, uh, the question of, to, of, of the night is, did the Bruce start a controversy between his parents, um, yet get the recording with his mom's help? Yeah, get that recording. I, did you say, oh, I, oh, 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 I know what he's talking about. Remember when I told you to, oh, to, yeah, yeah. to play that clip yeah, for your dad? Right. Did you do it? Uh, no, he, he went away. On work, so oh, okay. he's not home. But I, I forgot. I, I gotta go back and record it and well, then send actually, it to him. Then no, then. all, all you gotta do is call me, um, and then, right? and then I'll do it live. You can just put the show on in the living room and go, Dad, look at this breaking news. And as soon as you tell me yeah. on the phone, Smitty, go. I'll start talking as if it's normal. Like so. Well, if for anybody that doesn't know the background of this, we're gonna trick Bruce's dad. It, what was the thing we're gonna trick him into that the Giants? Traded. The Giants traded the six pick. Yeah, so Bruce's dad is afraid the Giants might trade the six pick. So Bruce is going to call in live. Tell me when you're ready, Bruce, anytime, okay? He's going to call in live and say, right. Smitty, I'm going to put you on the big screen. Go. And then I'm going to do this. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin from the FantasyFootballShow.com news desk. Breaking news, breaking news. The Giants have traded the number six overall pick. Things are going downhill in New York. That, that's fake. That's fake. We're going to do that and pretend that that happened when Bruce's dad uh, is watching the show. Yeah, he was hoping they got one of them. He's like, well, if I'm stuck with this, uh, I ain't going to curse this, uh, this bad quarterback. He says, I hope they at least draft me a receiver. And Thank six. you, Bruce. Yeah, that's going to be hilarious, man. That's going to be hilarious. We might. We, he's not going to have like a heart attack or anything, right? No. Okay. He, he's good. He's not. No. Okay. Uh, SF. Whoa, SF Flood. You're getting a little carried away. Stop yelling at me, SF. Stop yelling at me. Slow down. Hold on. Let me let me lower this. His, I put his question on screen and it took up the whole entire screen. Smitty, you really think there's so much demand for fields that the Falcons 
would have to trade their number eight pick. I don't know how many. Look, Flood, I don't know if you're if you're going at me or if you're you're just unsure of what I said. God, your your comment is is all over the place. Unsure. Yeah, you might just be unsure of what I you know. I, I've said it very very clearly um, that <laughs> you don't know and I don't know. I've already said that ten thousand times. I don't know. But Flood, what I do know is that you don't know and that no one knows because the new league year hasn't started. And if there is competition for them, competition breeds higher, bigger, stronger offers. Lamar Jackson, as I said on last night's show, and I've said this every show on last night's show, I'm not mad at you, Flood. I'm just answering your question. Last night I said, I thought that Lamar Jackson would have been snagged in a millisecond. I would have bet my left foot on it. Without very much on, on the line. You could have said, I'll give you a Lou Malinati's pizza with pepperoni. A medium, not even a large, a medium pizza. If, And you got to put your foot up on the line if the team wasn't going to grab Lamar Jackson at the cost of two first-rounders when he was franchise tagged. I would have said, give me the Lou Malinati's pie. I'll put my foot on the line for that. And I would have been sitting here hopping around when we mashed potato. I'd be doing this. Where's your mashed potatoes? Because... I would have put it all on the line. I would have risked it all on that because that was logical. So, Flood, no one knows. But if the demand's high, and as I, the way I look at it, Flood, and I might, I might just be a moron here, but the way I look at it is we got handfuls of teams that need a quarterback. Handfuls. And they're all right here. And I do hear that it could take a second rounder. I do hear people say it's only going to cost a third. That seems like hogwash to me but if nobody's offering then the falcons are going to get him for a second but what i've said flood is i think there's very very much going to be some sort of other piece to this that is more expensive than just a second rounder like the eight nine swap or if it's not just as something as simple as the eight nine swap in a second it could be a second and a conditional third that can become a first rounder if the atlanta falcons have 13 wins or make it to a championship game, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So all these reports about it's a second, could be a third. These are all people guessing. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Nobody. I don't. These reports don't. The reports that Bill's reading when Bill says, am I wrong? Uh, reports are it's a second and third rounder. Bill, who knows this information? Is somebody sitting in on the discussion with the Atlanta Falcons and, and the Bears, is it already decided? It's not, Bill. And, and to the to the point of, could there even be a, a deal that's locked in? No, because what's going to happen like any good negotiator is the Bears are going to sit there and go in the 11th hour, okay, here's what we're going to do, spit on our hands, let's shake. And the moment that the new league year, league year uh, uh, becomes official, the Bears are going to do this. Okay, uh, who else wants Fields because... Go ahead and up this offer. Who's got a better offer than this one? And they're going to leverage it. So it's not like it's locked in or a done thing. The only thing that's going to happen is if no other teams want them, like no one wanted Lamar, which is different, right? But teams might inquire and get a, you know, for a second or third, it's different than surrendering two first rounders. So my guess is that you won't have the same sort of, we don't want them reaction across the entire league because that costs two first rounders to get Lamar Jackson. I believe this is going to be different. I believe this year people are going to look and poke around. Once they start doing that, like the housing market, Larry and Bill and everybody out there, like the housing market, Billy, Langer, uh, appreciate you. Like the housing market, everything's driven off competition. Everything. Supply and demand. If the demand for fields is high, we don't know if it is because we didn't know if Lamar's would be high. I thought it would be high. You call me Footless Smitty. And, and, and was I right, though, Billy? Was I right Lamar was worth the, the two first-rounders? I was. Was I wrong that teams recognized mm -hmm. that? I was wrong. Logic does not play yeah, into this I sometimes. Be, I think there'll be a con whatever the higher pick is. There'll probably be, be a conditional thing attached to it that can make it jump up. I think didn't they do that with the Aaron Rodgers trade, too. It was something that made the third jump to a second or... Yeah. Something like that. So it's like, yeah, it, it, it can look like a second and a third, but that could jump to a first. It, that second could jump to a first if he hits he, mark. Here's what I would say this is negotiation like 101 when you're talking about some questionable value in fields, et cetera, et cetera. You just you say this, you go, look, 
look, Atlanta, I'm Chicago, right? Look, Atlanta, if we send you Fields and he ends up being everything you hope he could be, everything we hoped he could have been, but you guys do a better job with him, et cetera, et cetera. If he takes you to a championship game or you win 13 wins or whatever, they can come up with all weird kind of stipulations. Then isn't it worth paying us what he's deservingly, deservedly supposed to get us? And instead of us asking for the first rounder, all we're saying is if we give you somebody that doesn't develop, then we you don't have to pay, but if he ends up being a a you know MVP type quarterback, we just want the value that we should be able to be asking for because we think he can do that for you. It's called condition a conditional pick. It, it would be the most interesting thing you could do. Um, so you're wrong on the market. So you are wrong on the market, says Billy. I ain't wrong on anything, Billy. Because nothing's happened yet. Nothing's there yet. The market's not set yet. We can't see the market until the new league year, Billy. So no, I'm not wrong on the market. Was I wrong on the market space for Lamar? Absolutely. But was I was I wrong or was the market wrong? The market was wrong. Lamar Jackson was 1,000% worth two first-round picks to so many right. teams. And they all shotted the bed, Billy. I can't help that they crap they decided to crap their pants and shark right there on on the spot during the NFL draft. Um, There's so many teams that that would have been like, you know, easily winning a game in the playoffs. It's not going further if they if you replace Lamar, with, you know, their quarterback with Lamar, like easy, and that's well worth. I know. I, I, just, I don't get it, bro. First round picks to some of these NFL teams, they treat them like and they covet them like gold. It's ridiculous. They they don't even understand what 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 works, what makes sense. Uh, Perp says Bruce's mom definitely has to be on board with this plan, and willing to record it and play uh, play it up towards his dad. So Perps is right, Bruce. I don't know if you can get your mom in on this. Does she know about it? Have you talked to her about it at all? Bruce. I was on, I had you on mute, <laughs> but yeah, she's on board. I, I, uh, You're on mute, and, and I said, they to trick them. And, uh, she was all on board. She was like, okay. She's he, like, you got me with Atlanta. I was like, yeah, but that wasn't from Smitty. That was just from me. He doesn't know it's coming though, right? You haven't ruined it and told him you were going to prank him. No. Didn't. Okay. So I want no. your mom to be on board. Perps is right. I need you to call me. I don't even need notice. As long as I'm live, just tell me. We'll do it live. Just call me up and say, Smitty, my dad's in the living room right now. I'm going to go turn on the show. And maybe we have a code word like, uh, God, I'm getting hungry. As soon as you say I'm getting hungry, I know that I'm live. Okay? With your dad watching. Okay? And then I'm going to hit the breaking news button. I'm going to warn the show in advance that it's fake news, just so everybody knows. And we're going to break fake news that the Giants just traded the sixth overall pick. And I want your mom to film them, okay? I need the video. Right. We need the video. You can't you can't just tell us about it. We need somebody to record it. You're going to be on the phone with me. Your mom's going to need to record it real sly-like. And we need to prank your dad like no one's ever pranked him before in his life. Yeah. Yeah, because I told her because she got mad because she, she wants to do it because... Uh, I when I did it with the Falcon thing because she's a Falcon. That's fan. marriage. That's like, marriage. I was like, yeah, but yeah, but Smitty wasn't in on that one. But no, that was just me. Being I mean, that, that's one of the, the that's one of the commandments of marriage is that if a, a wife gets tricked, the the husband needs to pay. <laughs> yeah. So like, he, she got tricked. Now it's now he owes her. <laughs> now yeah. now he needs to be tricked two times over. It's only fair. Yeah. Did, All right. Uh, did you see? Did you see the thing where uh, the Vikings guy? Uh, I forget how to say his the general manager's name, but I know O'Connell was on board. They said trust the process as we rebuild. It's like trust the process. Uh, no, I, I, I I've heard some of that stuff. Yeah, they were saying trust the process. Which means, to me, that means they're not bringing back Kirk yeah. at all. Like, yeah, he's, he's yeah. Gone. Words like trust the process, we're going to do right by him. Um, we're going to explore our options. Those are all indications that a team is going in the other direction. Now, you could go in the wrong direction and nothing be sitting there for you. 
and that, that's where maybe 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 uh the bears end up right and that's why if they do keep fields it's because they didn't get what they wanted and now they need to put their tail between their legs and go hey justin i'm uh, you're our guy <laughs> And that and the, the damage is going to be done though, because they basically said you're not our first choice, but we're going to roll with you now. That's horrible. That's a horrible thing to hear. Uh, game changer yeah. for the fantasy football show when the Bruce gets this task completed. Absolutely, and thank you for the, the ten dollar hauler. You get a moonshot for that. Perks, perks to the, the moon. moon. Yeah, this is going to go down as one of the best clips. And Bruce, I can tell you right now, we're putting this up on IG. We're putting it on TikTok. We're putting it on uh, X. We're going to put it on uh, YouTube Shorts. We're going to get your dad good. And I want to splice in your dad's reaction that your mom's going to record. Your mom has to record it, Bruce. This is the most important part. I remember I told you when your mom said this right here. We interrupt this program to bring you a special message from the Bruce's mother. Get Bijan. Bijan. I'm not mad, and I don't need you to redo it, but I remember telling you that one of the most important parts of getting your mom to say that was to have her say and do it live, and you forgot it. Uh, you forgot it. I forgot so it. I, the only reason I say that, not that I need you to redo it, is I need to emphasize, emphasize that if you do this and nobody records your dad's reaction from the corner, set the phone up, prop it up, whatever, it's not even nearly as effective. We, we need it recorded. Otherwise, why do it? You know what I mean? We need to see it. Not just you guys. We need to see it. Okay, so please don't yeah. please don't mess that part up. That's worse than dro knocking yeah. over a thousand Petri dishes in the science lab. Yeah, well, yeah, I heard, I tried to get her to say do it live, but she was she was mad that day. She looked mad. <laughs> that's the day I that's the day I tricked her and she looked mad. Told her all the she did not look happy. That that, that's the, for sure. That's exactly the way we wanted it. That's perfect. Tell tell her she did it. She knocked it out of the park. Uh, uh, okay, her, hey, uh, the day I told her. Uh, all the Falcons players were traded for Fields. Yeah. Hey, uh, Bruce, appreciate you. We're, we're, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump off uh, or knock you off here at the phone line. I'm gonna go to to Travis and then yep. and clear it, and then I'm I'm gonna be back later tonight. Uh, you got anything else, Bruce? Anything else? Uh, no, no, right. not really. Let me know when you're ready to do this. I'm ready. You can hand him an iPad. Uh, I don't know if you guys have an iPad or anything else that you could hand him. So if you don't want to mess with the TV on the whatever, but he, he, you need to you need to be on the phone with me. Letting me know when to start by saying I'm hungry. You know when he when I hear you say that to your dad, and then you need to have him watch right. the show live, and then your mom needs to record it. So we need three devices going. All right, uh, appreciate you, Bruce. Later, uh, Travis. Yeah. Any any final thoughts, man? Um, yeah, just I think it was right as we were going live, or maybe a little before um, they announced Mike Evans is going to test free agency. Like yeah. He's open to go back to the Tampa. I but have that. He wants to test it, and so yeah, I have it's going to be like a team like KC or the Bills, or I'm sure there's a couple others. They got they got to do everything they can to go get a guy like him if he's out there. Mm -hmm. You probably get him on a shorter term deal. He might have a couple good years left. I mean, imagine him and KC. Yeah. After it's complete, how about getting the Bruce's mom live on the show later? We need to hear from her. Yeah, we can get her personal experience. It's a great, great job, Perps. Perps, another great idea. To the moon. Moonshot for that. Um, we'll we'll interview. We'll do a whole documentary on it. What would be great is if we did like a, a like a twenty minute documentary on this entire thing. <laughs> and you said, when was the first time you thought about this idea, Bruce? And just like just make this twenty minute like you know funny funny old segment. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, let me put that news up real quick. Perp says after this, uh, yeah, so thanks, Perps, for that. Appreciate you. Um, here, Here's the other pieces of news that I forgot to get to, actually, um, on the show today. So thank you for reminding me that, on that. Here's this piece of news. This is from, where is this from? Oh, Michael Penix Jr., good medical reports. Again, this is fantastic because a lot of people were worried about Michael Penix Jr. Maybe because of his injury history, ACLs, etc., wouldn't have a good medical report. All the medicals came back amazingly on Penix Jr., so that's why he goes to the freaking moon. Uh, DeBalt with a $2 hauler. Let me get to that one second. Majority of the opinions uh, out there or the athletics reporting is that the Bears would receive a second and third round pick in exchange for Justin Fields. We talked about that already. That's what, uh, uh, who is it? Was it Billy, I think, or whoever said that? Um, 
and, and again, that's that's we, we discussed this already. There's it's supply and demand. This isn't not information. This is the opinions of people around the league. You know what I mean? And not to mention, who's who are you asking? Are you asking teams that might want to make an offer? Are they gonna tell you? Are you worth the first rounder? We're gonna like we have no idea that that information is like there's nothing there's nothing concrete about any of it. But it, it makes sense to bring it up, Billy. You're not wrong. You just didn't know we already talked about it, which is not your fault. And I don't blame you, Billy. Nobody be hard on Billy. I think Billy was just asking. I hope I don't know. Maybe he wasn't. We, uh, we doing a dynasty stream later, most definitely. Debalt, uh, Debalt. I'm gonna try. Thank you for dropping that super chat. Cousins has a chance to Atlanta. Says Perps. I think that might have been older. I think. I believe uh, Perp says game changer for the fantasy football show. Thank you, Perps. Appreciate that one. I think I got all the super chats covered on that. Thank you. Uh, if I miss a super chat, let me know. Anybody, uh, Travis, if there's any people that dropped a, a membership, let me know or a, um, a membership question. I'm going to go searching for them, but if you know of any, let me know. Okay, here's uh, here's another. No, that's the report I just dropped. There's another report right here. Let me see. What is this? This one is about A.J. Dillon. Um, kind of funny, like, if I would have told you two years ago A.J. Dillon was hitting the free agent market, Travis, you'd probably be like, wow, he's going to land a starting job somewhere. And like now, like, the lure is gone. He hasn't done anything. Like, it kind of sucks that now A.J. Dillon gets to go somewhere maybe and no one's going to want him. Like, who knows? Maybe maybe a team does bring him in, but this guy is not proving it. Uh, it's kind of, a, kind of sad. He, he had so much potential. At one point, you know, AJ Dillon's like a backup. It just doesn't feel like anything but a backup. He's one of the free agent running backs, but I don't know if you agree or disagree on that one. Travis. Hello? Travis? Oh, my bad. I was, oh. on, I was on, I'm back. I'm, I was on mute. I was saying, uh, You're on I think mute, he'd be a decent bro. player. Bro. 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 Backup. But like you said, there were times when it looked like he was on the verge of breaking out. Yeah, you never quite yeah. pushed through that. It's like too late now, it feels like. Um, yeah. Brock Bowers, this is kind of old news at this stage of the combine because of today they were tight ends were working out. Uh, Brock Bowers wasn't working out. And, and as much as I, I do get frustrated with it, you're above the combine. Brock Bowers is above the combine. Caleb's above the combine. May's above. All these guys are above the combine. It kind of sucks. But at the end of the day, he's the clear number one tight end. He doesn't need to do nothing. Right. Like Brock Bowers could smoke a cigar, put his feet up in a lawn chair at the combine, and say, "Next, nobody come near me. I don't want. I'm not doing interviews. I'm not doing nothing. No one cares. No one cares. This ain't hurting nothing." It stinks because it's, there's nothing the NFL can really do either. Because it's like, you know, what, what can the NFL do to make these guys participate? But there really isn't anything. Yeah, you know, and here, which stinks because it's cool to see them all in the same place when they all work out. Here, here's the uh, here's the um, Matto. Thanks for the in and out recommendation it was awesome he went animal style i think with his burger yeah definitely maddo appreciate you uh mike evans report this is what you're talking about plans to hit free agency i had this queued up i just never brought it on screen yet because i went off on a tangent yelling and screaming about something uh this is bad news for in a, in a sense now could he end up in tampa bay still yeah but obviously he feels like offended you know because they didn't get a deal done like I, someone might say how do you know he's offended because i i'm a human being and if I'm trying to work out a long-term deal and you're far apart, yeah. you're not feeling valued, he's going to explore free agency. And therefore, he's going to start listening and see who does value him. And so going back to Tampa, there's still a good chance. But is it a great chance anymore? Maybe not great anymore. Maybe just well, good. Mediocre chance of going back to Tampa Bay. No, no, you know, Especially if he doesn't get the right offer. But if he goes somewhere and they're willing to give him a bag, my okay. guess is Tampa Bay's not. Or otherwise, Tampa would have probably said, let's not risk it and have him go yeah. elsewhere. Now, Baker, you know, you, you got you, Baker's, I'm I sure Baker. Say, that could be trouble. Because Baker with Evans is good. Baker <laughs> without it. Evans. You need it. I don't know. You need it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's such a big piece. Of, there's no one else that can bring in that as good as Evans. Right now, yeah. What did right Miss away. Smitty order for dinner? Going tacos or double flying Dutchman tonight? I don't know. I might be alone. I might be doing the flying Dutchman alone because I, I, you know, it's eight o'clock here and she hasn't eaten yet, and I'm gonna go out there and everybody's gonna be asleep. That's what happens when I go long on the show. I walk out and and 
and the whole household is asleep. I got on that note. I got to go real quickly, but I appreciate you for dropping that. Um, I do have to pick up some sort of dinner uh, for the little ones. Eight o'clock. All right. <laughs> People eat at eight in my house. All right. Hey, Travis. Appreciate you, bro. Later. Um, thanks for moderating, Travis. Thank you, everybody. All my mods in here. You guys are all, all amazing. I'll see you all tonight. We'll be live on the Dynasty channel at the very least. Thank you so much for, for supporting the channel. 98 thumbs up. Hit that. We need two more to get to 100. 100 of you watching, 98 thumbs up. Please smash the thumb up button on the way out the door. Thank you for joining me in this uh, near two-hour event like we do every Monday through Friday, the Fantasy Football Show. Deuces. Live Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Every single Monday through Friday. Live whenever big news breaks. We interrupt this program to bring you a special message from the Bruce's mother. Get Bijan. Bijan. Lift off of missing. Three, two, one, zero, zero. zero.